today is not just another day, but another possible chance to achieve what you couldn't aspire. So get on to your feet and live every possible moment of life. Good morning, one and all present here. I have welcome to all for the twelve of intellectual property rights, IPRS and IP management cost order, organized by IQA. IAP Association with Department of Com. This is that Dr. Subendra Chakrabarti, Chief Scientist and Change of Moment. One idea can change the world. One step can start a journey. But prayer can change the impossible. Now it's time to lend our ears for the college choir for the prayers. Open the eyes of the blind. Thank you, Koya. Before we get started, I feel privileged to welcome our Honorable Chairman, Chevel Yard Dr. N. R. Dhanapalan Sir, Secretary of the NRD Prem Kumar Sir, Joint Secretary of the EER Prem Sensor, Madam Principal, Inita Lebanon Evidency, and Madam Vice Principal, Mr. Jafia Salaman. It's, it's my duty to welcome all the respects and members of the various department on this joyous He has also completed diploma in marketing management and PG diploma in business administration at Anamala University. Besides, he has successfully completed different IP related programs conducted online by the VIPO World Intellectual Property Organization Geneva. His doctoral research has been in the area of technological dimension of patents relating to leather sector, leading to his PhD degree awarded by the Anna University Chennai. Dr. Chakrabarti possesses rich industrial experience of working as leather technologist. He has been working as a scientist in CSIR, Central Leather Research Institute, Chennai CSIR, CLRI, since 1993. Presently, he is the chief scientist leading the IP management, project management, and business issues of CSIR, CLRI. 
which has emerged as the largest patent filling organizations in the leather world. He has been playing a proactive as well as interactive role in the realm of IPR related activities to ensure effective IP management of CSIR, CLRI by providing necessary guidance and other inputs to the researchers for preparing IP documents, ensuring techno legal implications associated therewith. He has integrally been involved not only in drafting of PAN specification and building strong IP portfolio for the institute, but also in enabling the institute in extending its technologies and services for the benefit of the users, industries in India and abroad. He has visited Italy, Germany, Europe and Ethiopia and also published several papers in different national and international journals. He has two patents to its credit. Thank you, Reshma. Now I request our resource person, Dr. Subendu Chakravati, sir, to take over the session. Good morning, everybody. I mean, audible. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Screen is visible. Huh? Screen is visible fully. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good morning. I, I actually whether the uh, slides slide, slides are visible. Yes, sir. Visible. Can you see the slides? Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Visible, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, initial some uh, technical problem. Anyway. Uh, I deem it my pleasant privilege to have this opportunity to participate in this esteemed workshop on startup and IP management. I take this opportunity to congratulate Anai Violet Arts and Science College for organizing this timely workshop, which is very appropriate in the present industrial context. At the outset, let me thank the organizers, the college in general, and Dr. Triyalakshmi in particular for giving me this opportunity to, to be part of this extremely important event. It gives me immense pleasure to be associated with this event, to share my thoughts with this August gathering. The world today witnesses the emergence of an era that relates knowledge to economy. Economic development modules in this regime seek to relate the economy to the ability to generate and protect new knowledge in the form of intellectual property rights or IPRs, which has now attained the center stage of global trade. Effective management of intellectual properties is expected to influence competitiveness of nations in the emerging trade. IPR, especially patenting, is considered to be a strategic business tool to ensure competitive edge in business. This trend has called for a balancing act among nations in terms of technology development and patent filing on the one hand and protection of the market on the other. Thus, the ability to generate, protect, maintain and manage intellectual property rights is believed to emerge as a feature of global competitiveness in the emerging scenario. Ours is a worst country 
that strives to address a major challenge relating to economic growth and sustenance. An innovative concept of industrialization through startups launched by the Government of India under Startup India Initiative strives to address this challenge to ensure economic sustainability. So the title of my talk today is Empowering Startups, IP and Enabling Tool. Before we proceed further, let us try to understand what a startup is. It essentially refers to a business entity in the early stages of operation. If we look at it as defined by the government of India, it is a company or limited liability partnership or partnership registered as per the appropriate acts. The privilege is valid for a period of 10 years with a rider on the annual turnover not exceeding rupees 100 crores. But the most important part is the business activity that they are involved in. And this activity is expected to be new or improved product, process or service with immense commercial as well as employment creation potential. IP obviously plays a major role in this regard. In fact, having IP is advantageous to be recognized as a startup by the government of India, precisely DPIIT. It is thus crystal clear that main motto of this scheme of the government of India is precisely creation of employment and wealth. In other words, the prime objective is to transform the country into a job creator instead of job seeker. However, that necessitates enabling IP support and empowering facilitation and support mechanism. In this context, the SIPP program, that is Startups IP Protection Scheme that is launched by Government of India to nurture innovation is noteworthy. It involves creation of IP awareness and motivational arrangements towards nurturing innovation. It offers IP facilitation. So far as the actual protection process is concerned. And there has been a provision to identify IP facilitators to render free service to the startups, wherein their inverse, uh, their uh, reimbursement is ensured by the patent office. The list is available on the Indian patent office website. However, the entities are expected to remit the official fees, normal official fees that are supposed to be paid to the uh, patent office. But here also, there is a provision of discount to the extent of 80% that of legal entities. So this depicts the immense support, both financial and otherwise, that is extended for the successful ventures of these startups. Thus, familiarity with the innovation and IP system has emerged as the cornerstone towards this venture. Innovation relates to a new idea or concept deviant from the existing one for commercial success. It may be converted into IPR, a limited period monopoly legal right to exclude others from commercial exploitation of the same. It could be mostly in form of either patent or even design, industrial design. So let us try to understand a bit about it. Fruits of research that generate valuable usable knowledge base are expected to benefit the society. And it benefits either in protected form or in unprotected form. When protected under legal provision, it leads to IPR. And society again gives feedback to the researchers based on that further developments take place. It is pertinent that new knowledge leads having market orientation only gains much attention, especially for startups. Now, as per the international arrangement of TRIPS, 
trade related intellectual property system this provision there are different kind of ips that are included uh, in the ipr there are industrial designs trademarks or service marks gi geographical indication layout of integrated circuit trade secret copyrights patents now we we'll just give an uh, overview of all these ips industrial design refers to only feature of shape pattern configuration or ornament applied to any article by any industrial process what is essential here is the ornamental aesthetic part not the functional issue so it is not much concerned with the functionality but it should be appealing and judged by the normal eye and for registration it has to be new and original that is the requirement so for a trademark is concerned it has to be distinctive and non deceptive for protection purpose essentially it is a visual or identification uh, identification symbol it essentially individualizes the goods and services of an organization so it acts as a link between the manufacturer and the customer and of course it is a good publicity instrument and of course a symbol of goodwill there is a similar thing which is geographical indication where a, where a trademark indicates the manufacturing origin of goods and services geographical indication indicates the geographical origin so goods produced in different geographical regions may have same trademark if they belong to the same concern but goods produced in different geographical regions cannot have same geographical indication even if they belong to same concern so these are all uh, geographical indication is another uh, form of ipr as recognized internationally and then this is another form of ipr that is layout design of integrated circuit this is important because of chips normally electrical cir circuits embodied in the chip forms this ics and the layout of transistor on semiconductor ic determines the size and processing power of the ic so it constitutes an important and unique ip which can be exp exploited for commercial purpose trade secret is just to keep everything secret without info without disclosing at all all other ipl ip systems uh, enable disclosure of all those information but here there is a risk component that once it is uh, once it goes into public domain it becomes it may become very critical uh, for the owner of that so a decision on protection or trade secret requires to be taken very judiciously copyright it is essentially literary artistic or dramatic work musical work so in fact it is a it represents a bundle of rights uh, if we talk about a particular uh, playback singing how many people are involved in that someone somebody is writing that song somebody is giving lyrics somebody is uh, giving the voice some musicians sound recording so there are a, a bunch of bundle of rights bunch of people who are involved in that production so it is also one kind of right but for the purpose of invention which is more relevant in this context it is patent and patent is normally granted for invention so let us see what is this who can have it whether to have it at, at all where to have it how to have it so these are the queries that we have to address essentially it is a legal exclusive right granted by the state for a limited period normally now internationally even in india it is now 20 year period it is essentially a contract between state and inventor or applicant to give to uh, grant the monopoly right to exclude others from using the invention commercial on commercial basis in exchange of 
the complete disclosure of the invention. So this is very vital. So while seeking the right, and this right has to be sought from the uh, state, uh, unlike copyright or trademark, these are or copyright is a uh, proprietary right. Uh, as soon as it is created, it comes to the owner. But here in patent, it has to be sought. And same is for design. And it is a territorial right. So it is valid only in the grantor country. So if any uh, impact of that particular invention is found in different country, or if there is any importance in other country, so far as commercialization or collaboration is concerned, then it may be filed in those identified countries also. So any patent filed in, say, or uh, granted in India will not be valid in other countries. And uh, one more thing is, uh, any idea has to be put into practice for seeking any patent right. Now, there, is, there are two terms. One is inventor and patentee. Inventor relates to human being whose intellectual inputs go into that invention. So this inventor has to be a, a natural person. But applicant may be an organization or legal entity. So, and uh, since it is a uh, output of brain, it really doesn't require any formal educational background or something like that. So anybody, any person who can give novel idea that can be protected as per the act can be invented. So what are the criteria? It has to be no, uh, novel. It should be inventive. That inventiveness is judged by non-obviousness. So it should not be obvious to a person relatively skilled in the art. And it should have utility. That is industrial. It should have industrial application. So if, if it doesn't have industrial application, it is not parental. These are the three main criteria. And apart from that, it should not be uh, caught under any non-patentable criteria under the existing law of the state. For example, in India, section 3 and 4 uh, has indicated certain uh, in types of inventions which are not patentable. So apart from those three, novelty, non-obviousness, and utility, this fourth criteria is also very important while talking about Patentability. See, if we talk about those non-patentability things, then if it is frivolous or which claims anything obviously contrary to the well-established natural laws. So, for example, if someone comes out with some perpetual machine or something, it will not be protectable. If it is contrary to public order or morality or which causes serious prejudice to any human, animal, plant life, health. So if someone comes out with a very novel way of, say, burglary or something like that, it goes against the morality and it cannot be a protectable subject matter, patentable subject matter. Mere discovery of scientific principle is not patentable. And whatever exists in the nature, it is only discovery. There is a dis difference between discovery and invention. Discovery is whatever exists already maybe unveiling that and bringing it to public light that doesn't constitute uh, invention and naturally that doesn't form the subject matter for patent protection so it has to be invention and inventive criteria that uh, non-obviousness takes care of that <clears throat> mere discovery of new property or new use is not patentable if some new property is found, say, for example, today paracetamol is used for some purpose for fever. Now, tomorrow, if someone comes out with some other application of paracetamol, that it cures some other thing also. It is new use that cannot be protected. But uh, in some country, in India, it comes under Section 3D and it is not patentable. In other countries, uh, say, for example, US, uses may be protectable but not in india in india there is another uh, case 
uh, mere admixture resulting only in aggregation wherein two three components are mixed and they don't give rise to any synergistic mixture but simply admixture synergistic mixture means that mixture has to uh, exhibit some kind of totally different property then it will be synergistic otherwise if it is admixture uh, the a and b are added and we get the summation of that it is aggregation of the the ingredients that doesn't form the subject matter for petrol production new form of known substance unless they show enhanced efficacy this is also not patented and there are some cases for uh, novartis and there was a drug called grivec and anti cancer drug and uh, they tried to get patent for this in 1998 but and uh, price was also very high by the time some generic drugs came out and uh, it went up to the supreme court level but it was not accepted uh, because the the salt they created it was simply another form of this substance so if it is some another form of the chemical substance it is not patentable unless there is proper efficacy here the efficacy should be in terms of therapeutic value but there is no such thing in the document so supreme court didn't accept it in fact this section 3d in india has been added to uh, get rid of many uh, evergreening in case of drugs mere arrangement of rearrangement or duplication of known devices see if we talk about say one umbrella and if that umbrella has to be used in rural area in a on a rainy day if someone attaches a torch to that it becomes something usable but neither torch depends on umbrella nor umbrella depends on torch so although if they are joined into a uh, single device single Uh, substance it won't be patentable because they don't work independently of each other this plant animal this plant parts plant variety all these things uh, and even essentially uh, biological processes don't form subject matter for patent production then medical medicinal surgical processes uh for both uh, live animals and human being don't come under uh, the subject matter for patent protection method of agriculture horticulture also a not patentable subject matter apart from that there are some other uh, issues like mathematical or business model literary drama dramatic or artistic work uh, in india software is considered as literary work and it is not uh, patentable unless it is presented with a hardware um, but it could be patented in uh, other countries software per se doesn't uh, form a subject matter for patent protection in india but there are ways of getting it protected in association with hard, uh, hardware method of performing mental art presentation of information all these things even atomic energy related issues related inventions are not protected now if we see the uh, orientation what are the things that can be that can go for protection it could be product it could be process now product wise it could be a different chemical compound chemical product it could be device it could be uh, a composition it could be consumer product or it could be a process process for uh, making a new product or even process for improvement in in fact for startups it is necessary that uh, it involves the activity involves some new product or some at least some improved product or improved process sometimes what happens that uh, one product will be available but that product will be can be uh, produced by different processes so one process may be available but that may not be much feasible commercially or from other uh, 
dimensions but an improved process may come out uh, uh, any invention may come out with an uh, improved process which forms an uh, important subject matter for patent protection and that gets commercial uh, aspect commercial dimension so that becomes important for startups because this is a requirement for getting uh, startup recognition from the government of india so far as microorganisms concerned microorganisms are already available in the nature so straight away they may not be protectable but if some human intervention is there in form of mutation or uh, recombinant genes uh, in that case there is some human intervention to uh, the change the uh, uh, microorganism itself for a beneficial purpose then that becomes a subject matter for patent protection so these are the uh, different areas now if we go now when we go for publication uh, there is uh, in uh, <clears throat> among the researchers there is always a tendency to go for publication but when the when there is a publication the matter or the new development comes into public domain so publication brings the invention into public domain and that jeopardizes the novelty because novelty is based on a uh, worldwide basis and even the author's publication will become prior art so when novelty is judged it is based on any document any information that is available in the public domain either in the form of any publication patent or any book or anything that include it includes any publication by the inventor or author himself so it is always better that any uh, new development which is of use can be protected first and then protected first in the form of patent and then only it can be sent for publication now as i said that it is a territorial right now where to file that is a question as indian citizen it is a requirement that first it has to be filed in india that is mandatory and uh, in case it finds some application or it finds commercial potential in other countries then it may have to be filed in other countries but that has to be the decision has to be taken judiciously now there are different factors for that because it involves enormous expenditure so before deciding on that expenditure has to be taken into account act provisions what is protectable what is not protectable what are the legal setup what are the commercial opportunities what are the collaborative uh, opportunities all those things are uh, to be taken into consideration before taking that decision now if we see the document patent document we'll see there will be one front page where the, we'll have bibliographic information Uh, who is the patentee who is uh, who are the inventors where it was filed which when it was filed uh, when it is granted when it was published all those information will be available there but the main part is this disclosure part where in it says the discloses the actual invention how it works what is this all about what is the nature of the invention and how it works and there are two things in this context there is one is provisional specification one is complete specification provisional specification is only for priority since patent is uh, granted based on novelty as on date of filing that is the normal system the date of filing is the cut off date uh, novelty is judged based on date of filing so if that if before that date of filing if something is available in the public domain then that is considered not to be novel so in case some work is going going on but for some uh, purpose it was not over and it could not be completed but uh, it is confirmed and the researchers are confident that it is going into in, in the intended direction then one provisional specification can be filed 
uh, and uh, it can ob obviously it is not uh, work is not complete the direction can be given how it is going that information goes to patent office but the requirement is that that has to be followed by the complete specification within a period of 12 months and if it is so then the priority date is the provisional filing date is considered as the priority date and that will be considered as the date for deciding on the uh, novelty not the actual complete specification filing date so this is the advantage of getting priority so, so provisional specification is essentially for getting the priority and since work is not complete claims won't be there actually claims act is the main part as we discussed already the patent is like a uh, give and take here inventor discloses whatever is available in the uh, whatever is uh, invented whatever is the development he puts it into the public domain he discloses to the government for further uh, further research further development of the society and in turn government uh, grants the right now right is based on the claim that has to be sought so based on the disclosure uh, the inventor or the applicant has to claim the domain of the protection and uh, although the disclosure may talk about so many things unless, unless and until and unless proper uh, protections are sought for certain things uh, drawing the proper domain of protection it is not claimed and it can be used by others so claims have to be drawn structured very uh, judiciously and uh, obviously when the work is complete that complete specification then only the claims can be framed so the provisional document normally won't have any claim <coughs> the complete specification only will have claims okay apart from that uh, there are uh, device protections in case of devices uh, it is necessary that uh, we give some drawing because unless drawings are there it, it will be very difficult to uh, disclose the device properly and one important thing is while examining the document in the patent office patent office will look into the document as such so it should be self explanatory and the uh, it should clearly bring out the novelty and non obviousness of that and what is the nature of the invention how it has to be worked if it is a device it will be much more convenient if the different components of the devices are explained and uh, submitted to the patent office that's why it is done in the form of a drawing and drawing is given there are different uh, protocols for submitting drawings drawings those things have to be followed now in case of biotechnological invention there is a uh, limitation biotechnological inventions at times involves microorganisms and now full disclosure may be difficult some uh, some time because this microorganisms being a uh, living entity may change and it may be difficult to describe it properly so as per international treaty it has been decided that it can be deposited in some internationally de uh, international depository authority so then only it can be taken further so uh, whatever strain is used that may be deposited in any of the international ideas uh, fortunately india has two such ideas one is in tech chandigarh and another is in university of pune this is one requirement for biotechnological invention and another another important thing is uh, inventions that involve biological resources there we have a uh, national biodiversity authority who is the custodian for this uh, bio resources so in case the bio resources are used this can be used by indian citizens freely but if patent is filed and any commercialization is involved then nba approval is required in form of 
first actually one form 3 is submitted to nba and then one abs access and benefit sharing agreement requests to be signed with nba and that is the nba approval so for uh, getting patent the this, these are the different stages first the application has to be filed uh, by ensuring that it satisfies the patentability criteria at least it is novel and has got some criteria in uh, industrial application then uh, normally it is published uh, after 18 months all applications are published and they are available on internet 18 month publication full document is published meanwhile it goes for examination and uh, after it is published it is open to public so uh, it may be opposed some uh, anybody from the public may try to oppose this thing saying that it is not patentable on this this ground or this was available in the public domain and different countries have different systems india uh, has provided both pre-grant opposition and post-grant opposition. That means before grant and after grant. Actually, after examination, uh, the patent office will provide its objections, uh, uh, I mean observations, and in case they are not satisfying the patentability criteria, they will look at it from the patentability criteria only. And if they don't satisfy that, those points will be uh, highlighted and observation will be sent to the applicant uh, for response that is called FER, first examination report and it is necessary to support that it is necessary to uh, justify uh, why it should be considered as patentable by giving proper justification and that is called FER response if it is not done then the patent is con the application is considered as abandoned and meanwhile, opposition may come, pre-grant opposition. Uh, and then if there is any opposition, that also has to be taken care at that point of time by hearing both the sides. And if it is accepted by the parent office, uh, office after getting the response from the applicant, then it will be ready for grant. After grant, again, it will be published. And uh, post-grant opposition is also possible but for a limited period, uh, 12 month period in India. And uh, afterwards also, uh, it is possible, but that will go to go to some other level, court level, not in patent office level. And this grant is not enough. After grant, this patent has to be maintained by paying maintenance fees. And normally uh, in different countries, there are different systems and different amounts required to be paid. In India, third year onwards, payment has to be made. And if one has to be maintained up to 20 years, up to 20 years, there are different pay, pay, I mean, payment rates. See, the third to uh, first five years, uh, first four years, it is 4,000. Then this is, of course, again, there are different, uh, different kind of rates for different kind of applicants that is there, they are already available in the patent office rules. Now, if someone wants to go for any foreign patent, there is no, nothing called global patent or uh, it is always territorial. So if someone fi finds uh, it interesting and important, so far as uh, other countries are concerned, then uh, that patent may have to be filed in different countries. But the problem is, uh, if it is filed after a long time, then this the country, the document in the uh, parent country, in the home country itself, will form the prior art and jeopardize novelty. So there is a system, internationally accepted system, that is called Patent Cooperation Treaty, Patent PCT system, by which one application can be filed single application in single language there is one more important thing while filing patent in different countries that has to be filed in their respective languages for example if it is to be filed in china it has to be in chinese language if it is japan japanese language if it is uh, germany german like that it goes so uh, it becomes very difficult for a person to file 
uh, in all countries uh, simultaneously. But PCT system uh, addresses that challenge. One application uh, in one single language, single office that can be filed. It has got two phases, international phase. In international phase, after filing, it will do international search and then international publication. Based on the international search, one can decide whether to go ahead because international search, uh, if it is positive, that if the international search indicates that yes, it has a good chance of getting patent, uh, one can go ahead. But if it says, if it is not so positive, then there is an opportunity to uh, rectify it even before going to other countries. Uh, because once it is filed in different countries and then if it gets rejected, all money goes west. International publication and then international international publication takes place again after 18 months. That is the normal 18-month publication system. And then as an optional step, the international preliminary examination uh, may be done, but that is done based on applicant's request just to make it much more stronger. And then it enters the national phase. And in national phase, the patent uh, has to be filed in different countries. So this is uh, somewhere uh, 30 months down the line. So by that time, one can decide uh, the which of the countries uh, may be considered as uh, having potential, either commercial or collaborative or otherwise. So that can or some business potential. Based on that only, one can go and file in those countries alone but through pct system by the single application it can be blocked or it can be put in all the member states as of now it is more than 150 countries as i'm saying around 150 155 countries now so all these countries can be blocked but uh, at the national phase only 30 months down the line this uh, is a good time to uh, take stock of the situation of the technology in that area to see the market and to see the commercial potential in respective countries and to decide on whether to go ahead with different which of the countries to go ahead with. So this is a very good uh, system for uh, fine, uh, international fine. Now, why, when it is filed patent, there are different benefits it has got of course researchers r d organizations university uh, research oriented organizations will always have good benefit it in, in it avoids reinventing or duplication of research if something has already been done in fact that is the main purpose for which this system has come into picture if something is has already been done the next researcher need not repeat it if it is duplicated only time uh, is wasted and resources wasted. Uh, without doing that, if whatever is available, if that is taken forward by some other person, that is the right approach for uh, the prop for proper advancement of science and society. So it avoids reinventing the wheel and duplication of research. And at the time of uh, starting research itself, uh, the researcher is thorough about the knowledge in that particular domain. And sometimes it is possible to get ready to ready made solutions for any uh, apparent technological problem that is being witnessed while doing the research. It also identifies capabilities depending on the patent filing. People will know, one will know, the researchers will know who are the organizations doing more work in this particular area. So, and and uh, not only uh, this r d and r d and university or research organizations industry gets benefited uh, immensely industry comes to know what is if patent search is available to everybody so industry will uh, know what kind of products or how, what kind of processes that are available and what kind of improvements or what is the requirement of the society how it can be whether the uh, market demand is there not, uh, at present. All these things can be uh, assessed by industry 
even before taking a new technology from any kind of uh, developer or applicant. So before undertaking a new project, it is necessary to get state of the art information to identify the knowledge gap so that the research can be uh, taken or taken in that route. The roadmap can be made accordingly. During the course of the invention, search can be done. And uh, if any ready-made solution is available, that can be availed. After the invention, for proper filing and even for uh, cross-licensing or even for uh, licensing, one can see that uh, for filing patent, prior art search is required to see that for licensing part, we, one has to see that we don't infringe into others' patent because patent is a negative right. It excludes others from using that particular invention. So already somebody has got any patent, then it will be infringement. And the IP management uh, always strives to ensure that kind of risk is always minimized or risk is always um, avoided because this infringement is a legal thing and that involves a lot of money. I think also it opens avenues for cross licensing and collaboration. So this is uh, this is a, a glance for the benefits for R&D, for improvisation, collaboration, for business and industry and consultancy, even for consultants, it is very, very useful. Uh, whether something, some business can be uh, uh, considered for acquisition, for licensing, licensing in or licensing out, all these things can be taken. Even for government also it is required because patent examination, patent examiners will always take this kind of documents. Now, patent information is a unique source, unique storehouse of technology. It is a very good information resource. It is a storehouse of technological information. And uh, although it may not be always at different sophisticated level, but if we don't talk about any level, normally patents are filed at initial stage just to see that uh, because patent filing is like a risk. If we want to optimize that, by that time, someone may file and we may lose the game, lose the, may miss the bus. So initial stage itself, it is filed. So uh, documents may be available. This is maybe knowledge leaked at different stages. And one important thing is this excluding others is only for commercial purpose, not for others, not for R&D, education, even government. If government feels so that it is required for the society, that can be taken. There are things, it has been recognized that around 70 to 80% inventions protected by patents are not available in any other conventional form of publication. Even some publications came, but uh, patents would have come much earlier. So going through only publication may not give the actual picture of the uh, technological developments in that particular field. This is very important for researchers. Now, for that, it is necessary to do search. Now, how it helps? It helps in different way. State of the art. It helps the researchers to know the state of the art uh, knowledge as available in the public domain. Whether it is patentable, the if someone has come out with one new development that can be uh, uh, and based on the patent search one can judge and try to assess whether it is patentable or whatever has been done because, because if the patent application is filed before that date, whatever is available will be considered as priority. So based on that, whether it is patentable and whether it is uh, not covered under the non-patentable criteria as per the uh, respective acts <laughs> and whether it satisfies the patentability criteria. Whether this is a valid patent, patent database, gives that information also. See, patent is not perennially valid. It is valid only for 20 year period if it is maintained, subject to its maintenance for a, for that period by paying maintenance fees. If it is not, it becomes uh, freely available public domain information. So if it is available in the public domain freely, then that information can be used 
so whether it is valid patent whether it is not sometimes other uh, due to other uh, validity other reasons also one patent may not be a valid patent as defined by the act see patents when patent is filed in different countries they are all published even within same country also when it is filed uh, published uh, then it is granted different stages it is published and one patent is filed say if it is filed through pct root filed in india so all these patents are actually related to in many cases one invention gets so many patent documents which are published in different countries at different point of time so they form a family so this kind of family of patents also can be information can be obtained i think I, I, another is freedom to operation uh, what kind of by search one will know if we have this up to what extent this can be extended so that it does not infringe on anyone else's patent so from that point of view also it is very important so it has been uh, commented that any literature search preceding the grant of capital sanction for a research project cannot be considered as complete it is quite obvious because there may be some other thing because of which it is not patent now this it fosters innovation it stimulates technological change by because by seeing that only one will be prompted to proceed further to take the knowledge gap and try to address that knowledge gap by giving some technological input it is to provide an enabling technological solution for an identified technological problem so identifying state of the art technologies comparative evaluation of the available technologies that can be done and then monitoring the technology trend on global perspective one particular technology area if it is taken and globally patent search is done one can really see the trend how it is going over the years avoid infringement is very important while doing any commercialization uh, and it can do technology forecast also it can give the give an account of the past what has happened the present and in what direction which direction it is going and what could be the technology what could be the focus for this technology that also is possible through this kind of search and of course licensing by licensing the technology uh, revenue can be earned and that revenue can be again reinvested for research so technological foresight is possible research and patenting trends uh, on global uh, platform if it is taken in globally in a particular area in which direction it is going technology directions can be assessed and research priorities can be decided accordingly because uh, in some cases in some of the areas some uh, particular uh, particular domain probably uh, may match you and may not require further focus so other areas may require so in that case researcher may put more focus on those areas so detailed things can be obtained that way there are few myths on patent uh it is sometimes it is thought it is highly it is a high technology it is a superior technology uh normal perception sometimes people think like that but it is not so it doesn't talk about any high technology or superior technology it's simply some new development which satisfies the patentability criteria it cannot be highly confidential because anyway full document is published and anybody uh, from anywhere in the globe can access this so it cannot be a confidential document rights perpetual it is not it is only for a limited period and global validity is doesn't have global global validity it is only a territorial right so for this thing one has to file the dictum is first to file patent instead of going for publication then go for publication still uh, do further more Uh, research work on that and then go for profiting commercialization licensing or own business for startups they can start their own thing here and this is how one can prosper so the main focus for startups will be to take up this kind of 
uh, new knowledge and or to get associated with this kind of uh, system take this new knowledge and take it try to take it to the society for the benefit of the society and commercialize it and uh, get the returns thank you thank you very much thank you for your valuable speech sir now i request k tarini of to become general to give the vote of thanks Gratitude is the fairest blossom which springs from the soul. I am Ms. K. Tarani of Second Become General. Feel happy and delighted to propose the oath of thanks. Firstly, I would like to thank the God, the Almighty of showering us our grace and blessing on one another. I would like to bless. I would like to thank the college management for creating us a precious opportunity to have this event. Then I would like to thank the thank our Chairman Chavarian, Dr. N. R. Ranapalan Sir, Secretary N. N. R. D. Prem Kumar Sir, Joint Secretary N. P. E. R. Prem Chand Sir, Madam Principal Dr. Inita Labanan M. M. C. Our Vice Principal Madam Mrs. Jofia Solomon for their uh, continuous uh, guidance and support. I would like to extend my sincere thanks to all the faculties members for their encouragement. Then. At last, we I would like to thank the participants, without whom this program would have not happened. Finally, thank the technical committee for their technical support and helping us to have this celebration virtually. Thank you.